In this video, I'm going to teach you how to make a proper sesame ball. There is a certain technique to it, and there is a certain characteristic that will show when a fried sesame ball is fried properly. And you're going to learn what that characteristic is by the end of this video. So let's get going. Now, there are a lot of ways to fill a sesame ball. You can add savory ingredients like roast pork filling, and of course, you can put in sweet fillings like peanut butter, Nutella, and all that other good stuff. The last time I went to Kuala Lumpur, I even found a food truck that filled it with sticky rice, and that's what I'm going to do next after I figure out what they added into that sticky rice to make it so tasty. For this video today, I'm going to put in sweet red bean paste. So to start off, we need 60 grams of glutinous rice flour. And one very important tip is that you have to make sure that the bag says glutinous rice flour and not just rice flour. Even though both ingredients is made with rice, they have different properties and you'll end up with something entirely different. So make sure your bag specifically says glutinous rice flour. Next up, we add 60 grams of white sugar. Then just half a teaspoon of salt. Salt is a very, very important ingredient in sweet snacks such as this. And then toss in a quarter cup of hot boiling water. And just mix it up until it sort of forms a really stiff dough, just like that. And then we just cover it and we let it sit for about five minutes. So what the hot water does to that little bit of rice flour is to help give it a head start. You're just sort of pre-cooking it so that you will have a nicer and chewier uh, result after frying. And then once the five minutes are up, we toss in a quarter cup of room temperature water, followed by 120 grams more of glutinous rice flour and then just mix it up until it forms a dough. And if your dough still looks really dry, just, just add a little bit more water at a time, about a tablespoon at a time, and that's it. So now I'm gonna go in with my hands. This is a very, very pleasant dough to work with. Not like bread dough, so it doesn't get sticky at all. and it doesn't take too long at all. Once a dough forms like this, you only need to knead it for like a couple of minutes. Okay, and that's it. This is how the dough should look, nice, soft, and smooth. Cover it and let it rest for 30 minutes. Now, while my dough is resting, let me explain to you a little bit about the red bean paste filling. This is 12 pieces of red bean balls. It's about a teaspoon and a half. And you can prepare this by just rolling it into a ball, just like that. And I prepared 12 of these because, well, we're making 12 sesame balls. And just leave it in the refrigerator until you're ready to use it, because it is a lot easier to use this when it is cold. And I also prepared some sesame seeds. This is about a quarter cup of sesame seeds. And all I did was wash and soak these white sesame seeds because when you make it wet and moist, it'll be a lot easier to stick it to the raw sesame balls. So I already rolled out my dough ball and measured it. Uh, this is about 356 grams. So I'm making 12 dough balls. So it's about 29 grams each sesame dough ball. The last one's gonna be kind of wonky because it's an odd number. And that's why having a kitchen scale is you know, just an awesome gadget in your home kitchen. First, I'm just going to lightly oil my hands. It'll make it a lot easier to work with the dough. So normally I don't roll it out because again, as I said, I have a kitchen scale, but I'm just doing it for you folks at home. Just gonna split this in half so that it's easier to work with and cover the other half. Okay, so now we break out our red bean paste and we flatten it into a thin disc. This is a really, really important tip that I'm gonna share with you right now because the thinner that your dough is, right, the more crispy it will fry up. Because if the dough is too thick, yes, it's chewy, it'll taste great. However, if you make it thin, it's gonna be crunchy and chewy at the same time. That is why it's better to flatten your dough correctly. 
So about two and a half to three inches will be just perfect. Just push it down gently while squeezing up the edges of the dough until you seal the bean paste and you don't see it at all and just roll it into a round ball again. It should be fast. You shouldn't be spending a lot of time doing this. So I'm gonna show you one last time. Oil your hands as much as you need it because this really, really helps. Take a dough ball and just, like you're clapping your hands, right? Yay! Okay, about two and a half to three inches in diameter. Put your thumb in the middle. Take a, take a, what is this? Oh yeah, take a red bean paste, put it down the center, roll the edges on top until you seal the bean paste completely. And then we roll. See, that was easy, right? And then we just completely coat everything in the sesame seeds. You want to roll it while gently pushing in the sesame seeds. Now get a pot of oil going, heat it to about 325 degrees Fahrenheit. And how do you know if your oil is high enough for frying? Well, you stick a wooden chopstick in the center and if it immediately fizzes like that, you know your oil is hot enough for frying. Now it is very important to stir these up. And the thing is though, once you first drop it in, leave it alone, all right? Let the oil seal in the sesame seeds for about 30 seconds. And then you can start moving it around, making sure that it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan. And it's good to have one of these strainers around because it is important to remove any excess sesame seeds that have floated off. And this is something that you have to stand around and watch and make sure that they don't burn and you always have to stand around and move it so that it can fry evenly. And you want to cook these low and slow. Just a gentle simmering oil is all you need. And all it takes is about five to six minutes to cook these up. Right now, it is about the five minute mark. I'm gonna turn my heat up to a medium high heat. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna crisp up the outside. And I'm gonna cook this on a medium high heat for another two to three minutes. And then just remove and drain. All right, so as you can see, I fried up two different batches of fried sesame balls. And as you can tell, one side looks better than the other, right? So the ones on the left, I fried on a medium high heat so that it retains its shape and its texture. While the ones fried on the right are done at a lower heat, but I did increase the temperature at the last few minutes. So frying it for the last few minutes on a high heat is a secret to a really delicious fried sesame ball. Now I'm not saying that you can't eat the ones on the right. They are perfectly fine. They will be chewy and sort of crunchy, but the ones on the left are way, way much more better. Mmm. Mmm. Awesome. And these are one of my daughter's favorite treats. So let's go and let her try one out. Look, speak of the devil, she's here already. Here you go, Alice. Wanna try one? Yeah, give it a try. Be careful, it's still a little bit hot, okay? Yummy, right? Yummy. That is really, really good. And remember, I do make deliveries. I take Bitcoins and Camels as payment. See you all next time. Sometimes I even surprise myself. <laughs>